Hey loves, my name is Ofune and I want to welcome you to the Coco Swatches YouTube channel. Today we're going to start a fun kind of series on my channel. I want to start posting more and I want to start talking more. So if you want to find out more about what the series is all about and find out more about the brand we're going to be talking about today, which is, I'm sure it's going to be in the title, Maybelline, uh, stay tuned and keep on watching. So if you haven't guessed, by the title of this video, today's brand we're going to be playing with is Maybelline. Uh, so basically, I'm thinking that with this series, I'm just gonna go through a typical complexion routine for me. To get started, the first thing I'm going to do is prime. And we are using the Maybelline Master Prime um, Primer and Base. It's supposed to blur, blur, blur and minimize pores. Go. So while I'm, and I'm not the greatest at like makeup multitasking, but I want to talk about kind of what, what inspired me to start this series and just get back on YouTube and just talk more about these things. Um, see, I'm already forgetting what I'm doing. So I just applied the primer. To color correct, I'm using one of my favorite, this is like one of my favorite concealers, period. The make, uh, no, this is proof of that. Like, <laughs> this is just, it's almost, I mean, it's done. I'm gonna throw this away. I'm opening a new one today, but I just wanted to show y'all that, like, I for real, like, I really like this concealer. This is the Maybelline Age Rewind. I'm gonna use the shade Hazelnut. This is the shade I also use under my eyes, but I'm gonna go ahead and, if you didn't know how this product works, um, it has this little kind of furry top and then you have to go like this to get the product out so let's see i kind of wanted to start something like this because i feel like we are living in a very interesting time in the quote-unquote beauty community um and just in kind of media and social media in general and I don't know if I should make this disclaimer or not, but I guess I just have to say it anyways. I don't want this video to come off as like negative. And I think whenever you talk about like diversity inclusion, especially as a black woman on the internet, it tends to be seen that way. Anyone talking about their experience is not trying to be seen as, you know, or dismissed rather as like someone who's angry or bitter. Like, um, but the reason why I wanted to make this video is because I feel like we live in a time where there's a lot of people that are claiming and trying to uh, hop on the inclusivity, inclusivity train. Um, and in the beauty community, a lot of the times the way they do that is by, you know, giving um, customers a large foundation range. Now, when a brand gives or when a brand releases a foundation range with a lot of shades, sometimes those brands forget that real people actually wear those shades. <laughs> I thought like this, this kind of series would be a fun way to actually literally see like what is actually available to someone when they go into, when they're introduced to a new brand and see what else they have to offer because a lot of times there's just not a lot. Um, so I wanna start off with a brand that I felt like is very popular, very accessible and affordable um, and a brand that speaks to me. And I don't know how we should, I wanna do this in a kind of fun way. Like I'm basically, like I said, gonna go through every single category, but um, like I want it, like should we like give a a pass fail or should we like grade them? Like I wanna use this series to kind of examine what inclusivity truly means and from a customer's point of view for you all watching. You know, at the end of the day, as a customer, you wanna make sure, you wanna feel confident in your purchase. So that's the series. Hopefully as it goes, moves forward and progresses, it's gonna get better and more like, I don't want this to be like a heavy thing. I want it to be fun. So <laughs> now that we got all the heavy stuff out the way, let's get into the makeup. So back to Maybelline. Maybelline actually does have a few choices of foundation. So their most extensive um, foundation is the Fit Me, which I have here, Fit Me Matte Poreless. And I have two shades here actually that I could choose from, um, 368 
it, which is a uh, deep golden and 370 which is deep bronze so in the summer I'm more of a deep bronze in like, like right now where it's like not quite summer but we're almost there I'm a 368 but I want to use their super stay line because like I said I want to kind of go full clam so in the super stay line they actually have two versions they have a stick version and the liquid version um, I'm going to go ahead and use the, stick, the liquid version today and use the stick version for contour. So the Super Stay line actually is, I'm not sure exactly how many shades it comes in. It doesn't come in as many shades, but in terms of like the ratio, I feel like they recently just, um, like they launched it and then like right after extended the, the range. So I feel like currently the ratio is pretty even. So uh, I think we're looking at the fact that I have three different um types to choose from I feel like it's pretty good especially for drugstore and we're gonna go ahead and go in with two pumps of this foundation this is like one of the best full coverage drugstore foundations right now on the market I believe um, and I feel like this is I want to say it's 12 to 14 dollars um, but I mean it's it's a little price and by the way I didn't even see my shade so this shade I don't have 368 in the Superstay line, so I'm using 360 Mocha, um, and that should be that's usually fine for me at this time of year. Yeah, so but one of the best, in my opinion, full coverage drugstore foundations. I mean, it has the 24 hour claim, but we all know ain't nobody wearing no makeup for 24 hours. <laughs> it is mattifying, which I don't mind because um, I have combination oily skin but if you have dry skin you probably want to go in with something that is hydrating before putting this foundation on because it is super full coverage and super matte so this is what I'm looking like I'm just gonna go ahead and use my beauty blender to make sure that is blended in so this is the finished uh, foundation application. Next, we are going to get into concealers. One of my favorite concealers, Maybelline Age Rewind. Apparently, like under the radar, maybe they'll announce it later. Um, they actually have, an, they just extended the shade of this, but they're now extending more shades of this. And I think they're already available on Ulta, or maybe they have a coming soon sign. So, I mean, that's kind of cool because this foundation is, is like, it's bomb. Like, they also have Fit Me. And when I was researching this video, I also noticed that they're coming out with a super stay concealer that's on their website and that says coming soon. So I don't know when that's about to launch, but basically like, again, option. So that is another check mark or A plus or however, you know, whatever it's gonna be here. However, uh, we decide to grade this kind of um, each category. That is an A in the concealer department for um, Maybelline. Now I will say, you know, concealer as a definition is meant to conceal and brighten most of the time, but in terms of contouring, I don't know how many of their concealers actually go deep enough to contour. I'm, and we'll talk about that when we get to that category, but yeah, let me just, I do want to point that out though. So maybe A minus, B plus, I don't know. So let's just go ahead and apply this concealer. I like to use hazelnut because it does kind of have that orangey tone that um, I like for my skin tone that I feel really brightens up the skin. And I like to leave this foundation, or this foundation, this concealer on for about, let it sit. I mean, since we're doing like a more of a full glam look, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a touch of the next shade up, which is tan. Just gonna go ahead and place a little bit of that right here in the inner corner. So yeah. So while this is, uh, you know, setting itself, uh, so let's talk a little bit about, I wanted to touch on cancel culture in regards to brands specifically. So, and maybe you all can let me know what you think. Like, do you think cancel culture for brands actually exists? Especially when it pertains to like scandals, like with, for example, a brand launching, you know, an uninclusive shade range, because at the end of the day, uh, you know, there's a saying, no, no, um, there's no such thing as bad press. 
And so sometimes, you know, and there's even been speculation that some of these brands are using like black outrage, black Twitter to get more fame because, you know, when something like that happens and everybody's talking about it, there are going to be those people that are going to read and say, oh, well, that doesn't really offend me. And they're going to find out about this brand and maybe they're going to try their products and be like, oh, this, this shit is lit. Like, I don't, I don't care about what these other people are talking about. So it's just like... You know, I don't really, I don't, I can't think of any one brand that's just been like, you're out of here. Like the whole community just got the brand, like, like a big brand. Like, and there's been tons of, there's been tons of big brands that have had, you know, these issues happen to them in the, in the beauty community and in fashion and XYZ. I, I, uh, struggle with like when to speak up now and when not to, because like, I don't always want to give energy to that like i don't want to contribute to that noise if and if in the end all it's going to do is help the brand but it's like staying silent is not also an option either sometimes because just like sometimes it's just so like egregious and in your face and it's just like oh my gosh how could this like how did someone let this go to market in this way like you know so and, and let me, I'm going to start blending this out with my beauty blender. So, and it's kind of just like, you know, I have a platform and I want to use my platform responsibly. They say with great power comes great responsibility. And I just want to, I've always said, even before uh, I knew what I was going to do with my career, that I wanted it to, uh, I wanted it to be something that would help uplift the black community and black women. Um, and so now that I have this platform, like I can't just, I can't just sit on the sidelines and say nothing. Uh, but it's like how you say it and when to say it, you know, delivery is everything. How you say it, when do you say it, who you say it to, you never really know who's listening to you online. Do you say it behind closed doors? Do you send an email? Does it really matter what the what the uh, delivery is if people aren't willing to listen to the message? And so those are the things that kind of go through my mind when some of these things happen. So let me pause because like I said, bad at multitasking. So typically I like to uh, set my concealer right after uh, I blend it out. So we also have some options for powder. Maybelline has the Fit Me line, I think I mentioned earlier. They have these loose finishing powders, which is I'm gonna use to set my under eye and then set my face. They also had pressed powders, um, but I just, I've seen more people use these, so I just, I've never used them, but I've, I've kind of heard more about them, so I just figured that these were a safer bet than the pressed ones. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and dip my beauty blender or actually I'm gonna dip this beauty blender in and because I know my face is already super matte I don't want to put too much powder so I'm dabbing the excess off on my hand and I'm gonna go ahead and just try to press this in yeah I definitely lost my train of thought I don't even remember what I was talking about <laughs> Yeah, so let, let me know what you all think about that, like if you agree or disagree on like the ways in which to kind of address these things that are happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend out the other side. Uh, but yeah, let's talk a little bit about Maybelline for, for a minute on a more lighter note. I really just feel like Maybelline is a brand, like I think I said this in the beginning, that speaks to me because one, they're affordable in drugstore. Two, like I, when I, uh, well, let me say this, I've always been super into fashion. Like I think I liked fashion before beauty because I really didn't know what I was doing with makeup like when I first started wearing it, but like, you know, I could always like figure out how to make my clothes look poppin'. So for me, like Maybelline is the perfect merge of those two kind of attitudes. They are super fashion forward. They are at fashion week every year. They're sponsoring or they're doing the makeup on Project Runway. Like they're super into the fashion community. And it, it, you could tell by their uh, branding and kind of just every, it's in their brand DNA. 
there we go. Now I'm, um, that's that's a better way of saying it. So, and it's definitely like apparent in everything that they do. And so they're just a brand to me that like speaks to my fashion um, bug and like just the way that they advertise. And it's just, I don't know, their aesthetic is just very like, it speaks to me. Yeah, so contour, contouring, let's put contouring. I don't know, should contouring and bronzing? So for me, sometimes I'll do a cream contour and then a powder contour and a powder bronzer. But maybe for the sake of this video, and I know that some of these other brands is gonna be a little bit tricky, we're just gonna put contour and bronzing in the same um, category. So Maybelline doesn't have any kind of products specifically geared toward contouring. They have bronzers, which I'm put, probably put a video here or a picture that they get an F, like there's no way. <laughs> There's no way they're gonna bronze anybody darker than a brown paper bag. Like they're just, it's just not happening. Um, as far as contour goes, I'm going to use the Espresso uh, Maybelline Super Stay Foundation Stick. This is a good contour shade for me. However, if you are darker than me, I don't think that they're gonna really have anything to contour you with. So they really, this in this category, I really only have one option. That's contouring, so I'm gonna use this. And this is another mattifying product. So the space is gonna be extra matte today. <laughs> uh, yeah, what are some other brands? I wanna do brands that y'all actually like and or maybe that, you know, that you're interested in, but maybe they're only sold, you know, online. Um, accessibility is a huge a part of being inclusive to me as well. And I think it's like the least talked about um subject and what i mean by accessibility is like can the cons can the average consumer access your brand and i'm not talking about brands that are only online because a lot of brands are only online and that's completely fine to start your brand only online it's hard to get into sephora and ulta and all that so i'm not talking about that i'm talking about brands that are in store and online that for whatever reason and and don't be fooled it's sometimes the retailer's fault more than the brand's fault the brand can come to ulta's forum be like we have 40 shades and ulta and sephora can come back and say well we only want 20 of them that's a very real thing that happens and that's like something i've learned like you know doing this and sometimes why i'm hesitant to talk about certain launches because it's just like sometimes it really is a combination of both what the retailer relationship is with the brand um, and what other launches are coming out around the same time as you know as uh, another brand's launch so there's like a lot that goes into it and I feel like that specific point about making the shades and making include like making products that are inclusive and that include everybody actually accessible to the people that wear them is something that is not talked about nearly enough so this is uh the contour i could go a little bit more like darker with it but i feel like this is good enough for now i'm looking pretty matte so uh like i said there's no bronzer so i'm just going to add a little bit of color to my face with the uh fenty beauty mocha mommy or yeah so i'm using today mocha mommy i'm just going to apply it on the apples go up so now that I basically have uh, most of it down, I'm going to spray the face. Now, this is one thing like I didn't really look that hard for. I did. I don't know. I don't know if Maybelline has the setting spray. If they do, I'll insert it somewhere on the screen. But I just feel like I have so many setting sprays. And honestly, for me, I don't feel like a setting spray is 100% necessary because I don't always use setting spray. What I'm about to do now is just kind of wet the face so that I can apply my highlighter because I just feel like highlight applies better on a more like wetter base. Uh, but I don't really. Like, I don't have any setting spray that I'm just like, this is the shit setting spray that I'm going to use forever. I just kind of use setting sprays for this reason. So, yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and just spray the face. This also kind of helps with, like, the powdery matteness. Like, it's it if you are, like adding a lot of powders to your face because you're hella oily. Um, spraying it down with something like that before you set the whole face is gonna make it look like less cakey and just less like, 
uh, your face is like spackle and not gonna move. So I'm using the Molten Peach Highlighter from Maybelline. This is actually one that I haven't really used. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this to the cheeks. Yeah, I feel like this is a good amount. Yeah, this is really pretty. I feel like this is actually my favorite out of all of these shades. This is pretty much my complexion routine. So now all that's left is blush and setting powder. I already know I'm not gonna wear blush because they did have options that they were just very like pinky. And I'm not a pinky blush person. I don't doubt that they might actually look good on darker skin tones, but like, I don't know. I'm just, I just, I don't like pink on my face like that. Like on my, yeah, on my face, like, yeah. I don't wear pink like that. So. Sorry, I'm not trying the blush, but they have some options in their Fit Me collection. So the last thing is going to be setting powder. So I'm actually gonna go finish my face, change my shirt, do my hair, and I will be back to kind of discuss what we did today. So I went ahead and finished the rest of my face. So the last step is going to be setting powder. Now I feel like I'm looking pretty darn matte. So I'm for the purposes of the video, I want to show you all what it looks like. So I'm gonna use the shade deep. That's what it looks like. Let's see if we can maybe too bright to see, but I'm trying to show you the shade of the powder. And I'm just gonna dust, I'm just gonna dust this over the face because yeah, like I said, I'm super matte and I feel like all these powders. You know, sometimes if you add too much powder, it can just do the counter opposite thing of what you want to do, and just make you more oily. So I'm not trying to have that happen. I'm trying to lift it on my teeth. So I just, and let me see if I can uh, show you what it looks like. I'm a klutz, so there's a good chance I might spill this whole thing, which I don't want to do, but I don't know if it's going to focus on it. But yeah, that's what it looks like. Let's see, how are you going to focus? Are you gonna focus? There you go. So, I'm just gonna dip very lightly in there and just set the face. I'm just gonna pay special attention to the T zone area because that is where I tend to get the most really and here we are I'm gonna do one more spray just to make everything look cohesive and uh, wait for that to dry but this is my finished face so let's run down the list of products again just to recap and i'll let you all know what i think about each i'll let you all know what i think about each category so we have we have the primer primer for me sometimes i don't wear primer it's not a must for me do i feel like this was a good primer sure yeah i think it did the job i think it smoothed my face and blurred it but um yeah i don't I'm not like a huge primer person, so um, I can't say I can recommend or not recommend. I feel like it's a decent primer if you're looking for one for Maybelline, and I think they have other ones as well. The color, I color corrected, so I used the concealer, the foundation. I feel like all of the foundations that I mentioned today are popping. The Fit Me is popping. The Super Stay Stick is popping as a foundation, even though I didn't use it today, I've used it as foundation before, so I know that that's popping. The only thing I will say about the Super Stay Foundation Stick is that you don't get a lot of product. And now, it obviously it depends on how heavy-handed you are. Um, and let me see, Let's let me show you Espresso because uh, I don't really use it. I don't, well maybe I, I don't know. This is like how much product I have left and I don't feel like I use it that often. But basically you don't get that much product. So depending on how heavy handed you are, it might be a better look for you to go ahead and use the liquid if you're looking for a foundation. Also it kind of comes with a sponge, which, which to me is a 
a little pointless. Um, so if you had to choose between the stick and the liquid, I would go with the liquid. Liquid is popping. This foundation makes me look flawless. Uh, it has the shades that I need and it's going to last me all day. It's mattifying and it's just a really good drugstore option for foundation. Concealers, I already said this Maybelline Age Rewind is one of my favorite concealers. They're coming out with more shades or if they haven't already and they are also going to launch a super stay concealer and if I didn't mention this earlier, they have Fit Me concealers to go with the Fit Me um, the Fit Me Whole Fit Me. They have a Whole Fit Me line of complexion products where they have concealers, blushes, powders, which we use, foundation. So they have Fit Me concealers as well. So far, we're doing pretty good. Uh, Maybelline, we're doing pretty good. Powder. So again, we have options. We have Fit Me powders, loose, and we have Fit Me press powder. I almost forgot to discuss the powders. So the powders, I feel like product like the actual formula uh, are really nice and smoothing and mattifying but for me personally like I don't know the colors for me uh, I didn't hate them but I didn't love them either so I think they definitely would do the job but for me personally they're probably not going to replace anything that I currently use um, the medium deep I mean this is they're pretty good shades but I don't know they just didn't do what my other powders do, but if you're looking for a, a drugstore powder, this one be, would be a good one to give a try. Um, but like, let's well, well, you might you might be wondering what powder do you use? <laughs> so right now, I'm super into the Beauty Bakery powders and the Fenty powders. So for me, those it's competing with those, and those just win um, again. But those aren't drugstore, so weigh the options yeah <laughs> um however as we get down into the powder and contour and you know what? i'm going to actually double check that there's not pressed powder that can be used to contour when i went to the store and again this goes back to accessibility because if i don't see something i'm not going to know that it exists when i went into the store i didn't see a powder that looked dark enough to contour but i'm going to go double check the site and if there is one i'll insert it on the screen if there's not then yeah the powder and contour category uh was yeah not not good we could we can improve there's room for improvement there in the cream category and in the um powder category uh next was highlight they have a ton not a ton but i feel like they have i think there's up to four highlighters and they're all um they all i feel like can suit a large range of skin tones formulas pigmented it packs a punch definitely getting you know an a in the highlighter department blushes i only really saw fit me blushes again i'll double check and see if there's anything else on the website but yeah fit me blushes i don't really like the color selection so for me personally, maybe like a C or a B. Um, setting powder that goes back to the powders and then setting spray. So yeah, I think I think you could do polls on YouTube. I feel like that's the best way. I think I'll just do a poll and you yeah, could tell me if we're here for Maybelline or if we're not for Maybelline. For me personally, I'm here for it. I think Maybelline is a really cool, fashion forward, fun brand that is in, has inclusivity, fashion and just kind of a street edge shitty attitude all embedded in its brand dna they don't really do one-off things to seem inclusive y'all can let me know if you agree or disagree and yeah let's let me know what you think in the comments and also let me know what other brands again that you'd be interested to see this type of thing for i'm not sure i'm gonna call this series essentially it's going to be like you know can i do a full complexion routine with xyz but i don't know if i want to call it that yet so but that's the idea so let me know if uh y'all got some requests if there are some brands you just can't get access to what you've always been interested in because i'm very well may already have some of those things in my stash or i can um go and get them so yeah i hope y'all enjoyed today's video enjoyed this beat um if you were filming this video please give it a little like and subscribe to this channel uh and i thank y'all for hanging out with me today and i hope that i see you in the next one